Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how to make these earth and sky shimmer cabochons out of fused glass. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, I did want to let y'all know that all the tools and materials will be listed down in the video description with links to where I purchased them from that um, hopefully will be helpful to you in getting you started in shopping if this is something you're interested in doing. Here I'm using ceramic molds. You could use whatever kind of shape that you want, shape, size, you know, whatever uh, is appealing to you. I really love using these molds um, that make beautiful pieces perfectly sized for wire wrapping but I also really like these molds that are uh, great for like big statement pieces but I do use ZYP coatings it's a boron nitride um kind of like well it's a, a high temperature lubricant so what it's accomplishing is the same thing as like greasing and flouring a cake pan um and I needed something that would go up to, I believe this stuff will is good for firing up to 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas there are some other molds on the market, or mold releases on the market um, for kiln firing that are only good up to like 1,300, which uh, I fire up to 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit, and my firing schedule will be down in the video description as well. So I um, clean the molds always 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 wear a respirator um whenever you're doing this stuff i wear a respirator and i'm outside with like a venting fan on what i'm doing in addition to the respirator just in case um <laughs> but uh, i spray like three to four layers of the boron nitride like i'll spray a layer let it dry spray a layer let it dry and that way we have a very nice solid coating on there because these molds you can use them for darn near forever so long as you don't drop and break them which I have done quite a bit unfortunately um, and so long as you don't fuse the glass to the ceramic itself there are ways that you can like grind or um, there have been times that like uh, I maybe didn't use enough of the zip because I was learning and I thought well maybe I could be stingy with it nope I cannot be stingy with it so I put it in the mold like this and full fused and it got most of the glass out but then I had to go through with like a dremel and like still uh grind out some of it and the mold just never was the same afterwards so I prefer to be a little heavy-handed possibly with the zip uh mold release than to risk fusing to my uh mold so also a couple of tools that I like to have on hand are some very soft bristle brushes that are great for moving the frit and things around as you'll see upcoming. Some fine tip tweezers and then just some old measuring spoons. Um, just again, like any little scoop would work. And then for this color scheme that I'm showing you guys how I make here, these are some of my absolute favorite cabochons. And these are going to be using a combination of three different colored frits and then some clear. And I want to show y'all how I go about doing that after I show off. Oh, I love that sparkle of the green of entering. And I'm going to be showing you how I do it in a larger mold. Um, because the same concept applies for the smaller ones. But currently in my shop, I need more big pieces. So we're going to go ahead and start with the first. Again, four layers of zip. That's super important. Um, like you'll only full fuse your glass to your mold a couple of times before you're like, is it zipped? Yeah, it's zipped. And we're going to be using a base of, this is Frit. It's glass that's chunked up. You can make your own, but I kind of prefer how clean and evenly sized the pre-purchased Frit is. Um, as opposed to making my own, I've just never quite been able to get all the little metal shards and uh, stuff out of my own homemade frit from using a frit piston. Uh, this is medium grain frit. And then we're also going to be using, this is coarse grain frit. Now, am, the color on this one is Amazon green. And the opal doesn't mean opal like how you would think if you're used to working with gemstones and it has that really pretty opalescence. Opal means opaque so the color in this 
you can see it's the opal pieces that are in the green down here that are not translucent like how they are up top so it's just something to be mindful whenever you're shopping for colors i get all of my frit either from art glass supplies again all this is linked down below or i get it from delphi glass whichever one has a better sale at the time um, but I've kind of consistently found that um, Art Glass Supplies seems to have better prices on their frit, even if it's just a dollar or two on each. That, that really adds up. Um, Amazon Green Opal is going to be our base color. Oof, now this big boy. I use this color so much I bought it in bulk. The Medium Grit, grit um, Aventuring Green is what gives us that beautiful sparkle and it's all fritted up nicely. But that's going to be kind of our second layer. The third layer is this coarse sky blue, which I think is one of my favorite blues, it's so pretty. And then I'm going to be capping it with mosaic clear that's even larger than coarse. You could use coarse, um, and I think I may actually be making a transition to coarse uh, for my clear that I top with. But I'm also going to be using, this is sheet glass that was three millimeters thick that I went through and nipped up into these little irregularly sized tiles using tile nippers. So, uh, and I've shown that in some other videos, but you could just use pre-purchased cut pieces of glass or cut your own glass we won't go too much into that right now if you guys are interested in seeing tutorials on um how i make these let me know and i'll shoot it'll be a quickie just a craft long quick quickie but okay and i'm going to make two um of this color scheme that way we can kind of see how different things come out and i'm just going to come in and scoop up now, I'm not using any fine enough frit here that I'm worried about glass fumes or, or fumes, um, powder, but just be mindful. Don't be like getting a snootful <laughs> of glass powder. You don't want to breathe this stuff in, you guys. And if you're concerned at all, just put on like a mask. Okay. So I'm going to put some in there and you can see I have a little bit of bubbling here. That's just from some pre-existing glass that had stuck to this mold um, that I just zip over. <laughs> and then it this, this will be like the fifth time that I've used this mold after that glass getting stuck on there. And I just couldn't grind it off, um, at least not with any of the bits that I had. So it this is just life now, but it seems to work out pretty well. It just gives me a slightly... Uh, irregular texture on the back side after everything's fired so that's what I'm doing with our Amazon green opal and we can kind of shake it a little bit but I really want it to just be heavy over to one side and now we're going to come through with our adventuring green and I'm going to use our smaller scoop on this one and I'm just going to get this in there. Whoop. Gravity works. And I'm just going to kind of sprinkle. I want a little bit climbing up the side of this hill that we've made of the Amazon green opal. And then I want just a little bit, just a trickle coming into where it's just clear. Like um, there'll be nothing on the background. And so coming in. Because this change in depth of the colors is actually going to give us some really cool effects um, once it's fired. Because it's not just going to be one layer of shimmer. It's going to be layers coming. Like if this is the back of the cab and we just laid all the green adventuring on the back, it's going to flash more just from one angle. Whereas if we stack it kind of up, then we'll get flashing the entire time that we move the stone. So I wasn't quite able to capture that in this smaller piece because I wasn't able to stack the uh, Amazon green opal as much as I would have liked, but you know, even then this is still really pretty. So that's with stuff like this, even whenever I feel like I've completely buggered it up and it's like, oh no, it's still pretty. <laughs> so as long as I don't fuse it to the mold. Also, my favorite thing about this is even if I get dog fur in it, it doesn't matter. It fires off. Okay, so now I'm going to come through with a very generous scoop 
or just a scoop really, of our coarse sky blue transparent or translucent. I don't know if they call it transparent or translucent. I don't know. And I'm just going to lay this very heavily over onto the other side. I wanted to make this look kind of like earth and sky, but I also don't mind a bit layering up just a little bit more onto that transition point. Okay, and so now from here, if I just went in and layered tiles on this, we would get this interesting convection thing happening, but all of these colors would shift around a lot more than what I would like for them to, which leads us into oops, <laughs> our next step, which is I'm going to kind of just cap this all off with some clear mosaic because as this melts, um, in the kiln. I unfortunately don't have a viewing port on my kiln uh, and I'm not brave enough to open it um, while it's at full fuse uh, temperatures. Um, but whenever this melts, the clear will kind of stabilize all of the other colors where they're at. Otherwise, if I just stack it in the middle, we'll actually um, be showing another tutorial on the effects that you can get whenever you just stack a bunch of clear in the center. Uh, so stay tuned for that if you're into it. Okay, and I'm just stacking up a little bit more in the center because I want to touch the sides of my mold as little as possible. And so I'm just going to come through onto the other side. And so this is two hearty helpings. Uh, a better teacher would have measured and told you the grams. So I apologize for that because I don't measure crap. <laughs> so, um, whoops, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to come in and kind of poke the glass away from the edge because what can happen sometimes is as the glass fuses, um, it might drag some of the zip with it and kind of pull that into the center and make kind of a cloudy spot, which we do try to, anytime we spot that in our work, we do try to grind it out and then do a fire polish, but um, it's best avoided in the first place. So I'm going to bring the camera down and get some side views of this. So hopefully you're able to see here how the height is different. And this is how high we stacked it. You can also hopefully kind of see how it's not quite touching all the sides. I mean, it has to down at the bottom just because, but like right here. Let's see if I can do this through the camera. I'm going to scooch that away just a little bit. And I think that'll be just fine. But yeah, so there we go. And now I'm going to put the camera back in the tripod and we're going to stack the tiles up on these. Okay, so from here, normally if I had bigger pieces of clear cut, I would have capped with just the biggest piece of clear that I could. Um, but I'm going to come through with what I have. And I'm just going to lay... Ooh, they're slidey. I'm going to lay like three or four maybe, yeah, I think just three pieces of glass. And sometimes I'll wait to do this until I have the mold on the kiln shelf in, in the kiln. That way it's not like slipping around everywhere. You know, kind of like how it is. There we go. And then I'm going to do another, probably one of the biggest pieces, or one of the bigger ones I can find. Boop, just right there in the middle. And again, by spreading that glass out, it should stabilize the colors where they're at. And also, I'm still, I feel like, very relatively new to this. I feel like I have a very, not uphill, because fusing glass is so much fun for me, but I just, I have so much to learn. I'm barely trekking just the tip of the iceberg um, in what I've learned about fused glass. So this is just the way that I do it, y'all. Any of you guys who are experienced glass fusers or just if, you, if you're if you new new to this but you have some ideas, um, leave them down in the comments. I love learning from y'all and sharing ideas and exploring things that y'all might have learned things or thought of things that I might never have come across if not for your generosity and sharing. So I want to thank you guys in advance for being so awesome. So yeah, just stacking that up, and then we could put, like this guy, he keeps sliding. Yeah. There we go, and then we can just boop, put that on top, and then I will show y'all 
how we put this into the kiln. So this is how we have some of our other ceramic molds loaded into our kiln. Now these have already been fired and they are cooling. So, well, yeah, they're already nice and cool. So we need to unload them and get them cleaned up and stuff. But we have, this is our kiln bed and I just sit the molds directly on the kiln bed. It seems to be working out just fine. But then I use these uh, ceramic kiln posts to hold up a kiln shelf that holds a second layer of molds. So, um, and I've found, we had tried for a while doing a kiln shelf here with just like some kiln paper and like little puddle cabs. So like a short stack of um, kiln posts and then another kiln shelf, but I was scorching the top of our molds um so like here you can see that one I don't know if that's melted in there or if it's gonna wash off we'll see um but that's an example of if my glass was touching the edge well actually yeah um and some of these are just scuzzy so um also if you underfill your molds you might get some where it just doesn't puddle into the tips as well oh, those guys came out pretty nice but I want to show you guys what it looks like whenever you scorch the heck out of them because Man, I wish I would stop doing that. So this one here is an example, and you can kind of see how it has fused a little bit to the mold on the sides. And it's covered in like dirty fingerprints, but also I'd stacked just in the center, and you can see how it kind of got that interesting pattern. But it is like super stuck in there. And I found this only happens if I have the mold too close to the heating element. You can also see my zip has kind of like a scorched. I don't know if the camera's going to pick up on it. But it's not as clean, bright, eye, eye, paint, eye hurting, snow white as what it typically is. Um, it's looking a bit scorched. So that's, that's something that I try to avoid. Which breaks my heart because I loved this mold. So Callie's cleaning her filthy toe beans because she went outside in the mud. Hey, Callie. Are you a good kitty? Of course you are. I love you so much. Good girl. Okay, you can go back to cleaning your toe beans now. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get these guys moved over into the kiln once we have it unloaded. And then I will show y'all what it looks like tomorrow when we take it out of the kiln. So here we'll you can see this is how I have the mold sitting in with the other molds in our kiln and I'm not quite done loading the kiln yet but once I get it there I'll show you guys how I start up and program my firing schedule. Okay so I have the kiln completely loaded for what I'm going to run tonight and I've even got some little puddle cabs prepping up over here but that's for a different day so I'm just going to gently lower the kiln turn that on now I have this pre-programmed um, and the what I have it programmed with is down in the video description um, and some kilns like different kilns have different um, programming stuff <laughs> this is not my specialty so look up the instructions for your machine um, I'm going to go to user, going to be lots of beeping. This is the third program that I have set in here. Um, the rate one, that's the rate at which the heat is increasing. So it's at 275 Fahrenheit until it gets to 1215, so 1215 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's going to hold that for 35 minutes. My second rate is going to be 50 degrees. Uh, and that's per hour, I do believe, until I get up to 1250 then that's going to hold for another 35. My third rate is 275 until I get to 1330. And that's going to hold for 15. My fourth rate is 350 until I get up to full fuse. That's 1500. And that's going to hold for 20 minutes. And then full is just as fast as the kiln will naturally cool. Like I don't open it and vent any of the heat or anything. I just let it reduce in temperature down to 950 and that's going to hold once it gets down to 950 it's going to hold for two hours and then I end the program by the rate six is just zero 
that lets it know that it doesn't need to do anything else. It's done. So, and it's on. So. Alrighty, y'all. So it is the following morning. The kiln had cooled to 111 degrees. So I had switched it off and then remembered I was shooting a tutorial. So, ooh, oh, that's looking nice. Now they're still, they're still just a tad warm. So I'm gonna leave this open and let them cool the rest of the way. But let's get a more up close look of how these are looking. Alrighty, so it has cooled down, the kiln has, and all the molds inside of it, and <clears throat> I'm going to come through, and this is the one that we constructed together, so you can kind of see how they're looking, and I just take it, and one of them came out nice and easy, and then I, you can see it's all over my hands, and I'm just going to clunk it into this bowl of water that keeps the powder from spreading more. And there's the other one. And then we're just going to clunk that on in there. And then I'm going to set the mold off to the side to either be sprayed and used again or cleaned and then sprayed and used again. So I've got a bowl of water and my scrub brush and I'm just going to come in and keeping everything very wet so no dust gets into the air. Sometimes if we get little bits that are, see that's where that dimple was, let me, yeah, um, there's a little bit of boron nitride kind of embedded in there. Sometimes I'll go through with like a Dremel or something if I can't get it all out, but for the most part, it scrubs out just fine. So that is how it's looking. Go through the light through it. And with the light hitting it. Now you can see here we had a little bit of that opaque color pulling up to the front, but I don't mind that a bit on the sides. I think this came out really beautiful. So I'm going to get the other one cleaned up and then show you how they look when they're dry. So after cleaning and drying, this is how our cabs have come out. And you can actually see this is the one with that little bit of a dimple in the back from the defect in the mold. And I actually think it adds some cool visual interest, but that's just me. Let's see if I can capture some of that shimmer. I think I'm coming in at the wrong angle with the camera because it's getting more backlit than anything. So let's shift the camera angle around a little bit because I want I want you guys to be able to see the full effect. There we go. And even this isn't capturing to the fullest effect the shimmer and flash of what's really happening. Now, I will have, hopefully, down in the video description below, links to where um, I do a tutorial on how to wrap this shape of cabochon. And if you guys are interested in me revisiting that with an updated tutorial, maybe hopefully with better camera angles or lighting or something of the sort, uh, or even just variations on it, let me know down below. But I think these guys came out really beautiful. If you enjoy uh, our channel and would like to support it, um, you know, beyond watching and liking and sharing and subscribing and all that, um, we do sell cabochons on our website, backtoearthcreations.com. Whoa! And they are <laughs> super durable. Um, <laughs> and, um, also we have our monthly craft along kits that we send out where you can get cabs shipped to you every month at a great discount. So be sure to check that out. There's little video tours of what you can expect in each of our membership levels of packages. Um, and be sure to sign up for our newsletter. That way you can get notifications sent to you when we have new tutorials and shop updates and all sorts of different stuff. So. Hey guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me in this video. I do hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you're watching this during the premiere, hello! And if you're watching this in the future and wanted to have watched it during the premiere, be sure to sign up for our newsletter because we send out notifications anytime we have a new live stream, video tutorial, um, shop update, anything like that. We send it directly to your email 
inbox that way you're not having to rely on like YouTube's notification system. Um, so there's that. Also, uh, in our newsletters, you get exclusive coupons and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, and if you enjoy our channel, sorry, I'm trying to remember everything. You'd think I'd just like write it down and be done with it, but nope. Um, if you, if you enjoy our channel and would like to support the creation of more free tutorials, as well as participate in our behind the scenes content and exclusive streams, and maybe even our craft along club, uh, please consider joining our craft along club. <laughs> as little as a dollar a month or $12 a year, a year can go a long way in supporting the production of this channel, as well as, um, I don't know, all sorts of stuff, really. <laughs> And you get even more exclusive coupons if you join our Craft Along Club, like even bigger coupons. Um, and the, the more you pledge, the more you get. So uh, in our higher tiers, we actually send out monthly Craft Along kits and all sorts of different things. So, But also just liking, sharing, and subscribing is amazing. So thank you guys so much for spending your time here with us today. And we will see you in our next video. So until then, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>